The laundry detergent market is one that is characterized neither as perfect competition nor monopoly. So then what type of market is it? There are a few things that could help us understand. In monopolistic competition, there are many firms competing through product differentiation. In an oligopoly, there are relatively few firms with shares in the market. In the case of an oligopoly, differentiation is not as prevalent. So, laundry detergent market is most likely monopolistic competition. The demand curve faced by a perfectly competitive firm, as seen on the left, is perfectly elastic, meaning that it can sell all the output it wishes at the prevailing market price. The demand curve faced by a monopoly, seen here in the middle, is the market demand. It can sell more output only by decreasing the price it charges. The demand curve faced by a monopolistically competitive firm, seen on the right, falls in between. To maximize profits, the monopolistically competitive firm would choose a quantity where the marginal revenue equals marginal cost, or Q, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Here it would choose a quantity of 40 and a corresponding price of 16. The price is above the average cost curve, so the firm would experience a positive profit, seen here as the dark shaded rectangle. For monopolistically competitive firms, profits draw new entrants into the market, and losses cause firms to leave the market. Here are some examples of this. In the graph on the left, at PO, or the original price, and QO, or the original quantity, the monopolistically competitive firm shown in this figure is making a positive economic profit. This is clear because you follow the dotted line above QO, you can see the price is above average cost. Positive economic profits attract competing firms into the industry, driving the firm's demand down to D1. At the new equilibrium quantity, P1 and Q1, the original firm is earning zero economic profits. And the new equilibrium quantity, P1 and Q1, the original firm is now earning zero economic profits and entry into the industry ceases. In the graph on the right, the opposite occurs. At PO and QO, the firm is losing money. If you follow the dotted line above QO, you can see that average cost is above the price. Losses induce firms to leave the industry. When they do, demand for the original firm rises to D1, where once again the firm is earning zero economic profit. Consider a member <coughs> firm in an oligopoly cartel that is supposed to produce a quantity of 10,000 and sell at a price of 500. The other members of the car cartel can encourage this firm to honor its commitments by acting so that the firm faces a kink demand curve. If the oligopolist attempts to expand output and reduce price slightly, other firms also cut prices immediately. So if the firm expands output to 11,000, the price per unit falls dramatically to 300. On the other side, if the oligopoly attempts to rise, raise its price, other firms will not do so. So if the firm raises its price to 550, its sales decline sharply to 5,000. Thus, the members of a cartel can discipline each other to stick to the pre-agreed levels of quantity and price through a strategy of matching all price cuts but not matching any price increases. Consider this graph, which shows the market demand, marginal cost, and marginal revenue curve for firms in an oligopolistic industry. In this example, we assume firms have zero fixed costs, so all costs are variable. Suppose the firms collude to form a cartel. What price will the cartel charge? What quantity will the cartel supply? How much profit will the cartel earn? In answer to these questions, if the firms form a cartel, they will act like a monopoly, choosing the quantity of output where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Drawing a line from the monopoly quantity up to the demand curve shows the monopoly price. Assuming that fixed costs are zero, and with an understanding of cost and profit, we can infer that when the marginal cost curve is horizontal, average cost is the same as marginal cost. Thus, the cartel will earn positive economic profits. 
equal to the area of the rectangle with a base equal to the monopoly quantity and a height equal to the difference between the price on the demand above the monopoly quantity and average cost, as shown in the figure. Suppose now that the cartel breaks up and the oligopolistic firms compete as vigorously as possible by cutting the price and increasing sales. What will the industry quantity and price be? What will the collective profits be of all firms in the industry? Well, the firms will expand output and cut prices as long as there are profits remaining. The long run equilibrium will occur at the point where average cost equals demand. As a result, the oligopoly will earn zero economic profits due to cutthroat competition as shown in this figure. Now let's compare both situations. We're going to compare the equilibrium price and quantity and profit for the cartel and the cutthroat competition outcomes. We see that the price of the cartel is greater than the price of the cutthroat competition. We also see that the quantity in the cartel is less than the quantity in the cutthroat competition. Profit from the cartel is positive and large. Profit from the cutthroat competition is zero. Another way to look at the decisions that oligopolistic firms have to make is through the prisoner's dilemma or duopoly matrix. Here we see that there is incentive to work together to set prices as a cartel, but there are potential windfalls if one or the other party takes advantage of their fellow market participant. At the bottom right, we finally see the dire situation if both oligopolistic firms decide not to cooperate. So to review again, at the top left, we see the benefits of the cartel. On the bottom left and the top right, we see where uh, cartel members can take advantage of other cartel members if they try to increase or decrease prices. Then finally, at the bottom right, we see the cutthroat scenario where everybody's competing vigorously against one another and profits go to zero.